Thank you, Carsten. You just saved me five minutes because I don't have to introduce myself. Then. But I want to um, start with this picture. Normally on our corporate slide, we put a pretty picture of hotels. Today I've put a picture of uh, a park in Erlikon because that's where the whole uh, Swiss Hotel Talk project started when I was on my way to the Swiss Hotel in Erlikon to have dinner with Chris. And I was thinking at some way to engage people which would actually fit what you were describing in your uh, presentation, Carsten, the Generation Y. And that's really what we've been um, thinking about with my colleagues at uh, FRHI about engagement. Not only touching um, the Generation Y, we have, we're lucky to have many generations working with us, but uh, the, the youngest part of um, of our colleagues are part of this uh, Generation Y and they are the ones who do the part of the most difficult job for some of them. So that was really the question that we've been having for uh, quite a long time. Just a few words about um, FRHI because we talk about Europe and as you can see Europe is quite big in our uh, company it starts in Scotland and ends up in Azerbaijan. So that means a lot of different uh, culture to manage and this is a very important aspect. Uh, different uh, countries obviously from an engagement perspective this is probably less relevant than from a pure human resources uh, management uh, approach. Uh, different language. We've, we, we've been talking about Gallup. We've been using Gallup to measure our, our engagement for the last six years. And there is one uh, question part of the Q12, which is the, t the, the, the questionnaire that Gallup uses to uh, measure engagement. And is a question number three, I think, and it's, it is, I have a best friend at work. Well, whether you ask this question in the UK or in Germany or in um, I'm not very good in geography. Turkey. <laughs> Turkey. <yes. laughs> uh, whether you ask this question in these three countries, just to give three examples, actually this card is not very nice. I would say, but, uh, <laughs> um, the the understanding and the, the outcome of the of the of the answer is totally different. And I remember having spent. A, bit of time in Germany explaining that actually the question you have a best friend at work is not necessarily to be taken as purely my best friend but more somebody to whom you can rely and to whom you can really trust when you're at work so that's it and uh, yeah I mean just to give you an idea it is about 33 hotels uh, 31 hotels I'm always we developing a lot so I'm always very <laughs> generous with the number uh, a good split of uh, three brands that have been put together in this structure only nine months ago. So we just uh, administered our, we do a pulse survey every, oh, actually we do an employee uh, colleague engagement survey every year in September and we take the pulse of the company in April. So this is the first time that actually we just ended last week the pulse survey where we're going to get the result next week and see how the changes in the company has happened. It was before uh, managed independently in three brands, Fairmont, Raffles and Swiss Hotel. I was head of human resources for Swiss Hotel and now with the matrix that we've put in place, uh, I'm the head of human resources for Europe for three exciting brands. So enough about um, Fairmont. Just two words. Ah, yeah, I wanted to show you some pretty pictures as well. Just a few of uh, the hotel for the one who are not maybe not familiar with uh, with our portfolio. I mean, in, in Europe we have icons like the Savoy in um, in London, the Royal Monceau in Paris, the Swiss Hotel in Zurich, the Fairmont Monte Carlo, the Montreux Palace, Swiss Hotel Istanbul, and um, Swiss Hotel Krasnyholm in Moscow. Just to give you some idea, and uh, I also want just to touch on what Carsten said. I'm doing a doctorate uh, at Cranfield University. Cranfield University is an executive and um, postgraduate uh, post only university. So um, most of the people have a have a full a full time work beside or a consultant, or which is the same as having a full time work. Um, and I'm doing this doctorate and my, my research topic is employee engagement. I'm lucky to have a full-time job and to have the opportunity to continue uh, researching on employee engagement. And this is something 
that in the role of human resources really is capital. For me, there are two. We can look at human resources on two different uh, parts. The first one is all the payroll administration and what we do so well and which is in some way, despite the technical challenge, quite easy to achieve. And on the other hand, you have everything that revolves around employee engagement. If you put employee engagement in the center of your strategy, then you can tick all the box and the higher your uh, engagement will be, the more you will have great leadership and uh, great uh, performance as well. This is the work of a totally disengaged person. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not what we want to have in our hotel. The hotel industry, my, my research is around employee engagement in the service industry. I wanted to do it on the luxury hospitality industry. And then when I went to Cranfield, I explained that to my research supervisor. She said, no, 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 you're going to do it. You're going to broaden the range, otherwise you're not going to uh, finish the the doctorate, and then I say, okay, so then I'm going to touch all the aspects of employee engagement, leadership, uh, motivation, uh, I mean, you name it, and they were just like, no, you need to restrict it and to really touch one thing so you can go really deep. So I will show you at the end what this work uh, resulted in and where is, uh, w what are the areas I am uh, researching currently. So. <coughs> Just a few statistics as we like, statistics in this kind of presentation and I will just show you um, a, a research that has been done by the Boston Consulting Group, um, October, October 2013 and you can see from a human, resp uh, human resources perspective what are the topics of uh, great importance and which one needs a strong need to act and you can see that engagement is uh, high in importance and it still requires um, a strong need to act. So that's what we are doing tonight. Uh, we've seen a lot of examples with Sunny earlier and I'm just going to go and give you a bit of uh, history on, uh, on employee engagement. It all started in 1990. It's not like one day somebody woke up and decided that there would be employee engagement in our practice. But uh, William Kahn actually was the first one to uh, talk about employee engagement and you have the um, the different definitions, the one I've picked and for having been through the literature on employee engagement for the last two years I can tell you there is more and more um, there is more and more definition available if, if you're interested. What is um, also quite impressive is the interest that uh, employee engagement has had in the last two decades. Some research have been carried out very systematically and very seriously on the impact on performance. Sonny touched on, on that earlier and this has really had uh, a great impact on people re looking at uh, employee engagement quite seriously. I remember when I started uh, here in Zurich about nine years, nine years ago and I was talking about the importance of engagement to our CEO, I was like, yeah, but does it have really an impact on our finance? And I was just like, okay. In the meantime, I've been quite influential and I managed to change the approach and to uh, really make it on the top of our uh, HR priorities. Uh, I like Kant's engagement definition. This is not uh, always to the taste of my panel in Cranfield. This is the oldest definition. This is the oldest way of, uh, of approaching engagement and there has been in the, in the meantime some uh, more research. But Khan has also um, actually completed his definition a, few, a couple of years ago which makes it again quite relevant. What I like in Khan is that he looks at three different elements which are meaningfulness, which are availability and safety, and we've touched, we, we've touched on it uh, earlier. Um, these three different elements have to do, and particularly the meaningfulness has to do with uh, giving a meaning to the people working in your organization. So it is easy, or maybe I always think it is easier to do it in other industries than the hospitality industry. When you walk in the front of the house in a hotel, in the front of the house, the reception, um, restaurant, etc., all the positions that are actually in contact with guests are quite easy to, um, to engage because you have 
uh, immediate recognition, providing that you are engaged, of course. You have immediate recognition and you get the feedback from the guest and this is something that normally balances the stress that can uh, result in this kind of situation. But when you talk about the back of the house, people working inside the hotel, and I'm not only talking about people working in uh, human resources in an office, but we have a lot of people working in the kitchen, we have a lot of people working in stewarding, which is uh, washing the, 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 the pots on a, on a daily basis. We think about the chambermaid who are cleaning the room. It is a bit more difficult and that's really the approach I have in my research, is to try not only to focus on the people who generate the money, but on everybody who is contributing to the success of a hotel. So, uh, meaningfulness, availability, making sure that our colleagues are not uh, bothered by either private, um, private issues that prevent them to do their, their work um, in, a, in a perfect way, and also that we don't have uh, leaders in our hotels who are maybe not at the place they should be, and that also can create some, uh, some um, anguish or, or, or stress to our colleagues. And finally, the safety. Safety is not only about having um, a safe place of work, but it's also about making sure that we have people who are on contract that are not, we, we can see in some of the, of the countries that we're working where we hire people on a six months or on a year contract that are always renewable. And the objective is really to make sure that our people have a perspective, that we give them a perspective in our hotel. And, um, that's one of, one of the examples I wanted to, to share with you. So these three elements are really the three, the three pillars of uh, our employee engagement strategy. This is not easy to achieve, as I said, I think the service industry in general, the hospitality industry in particular, is quite a challenging place to have a high colleague engagement. We've been lucky uh, within our different hotels to have been increasing it for the last seven years, which is the time we started measuring it. It's not the time we started, I started being there. So, um, so we've had every year on a scale of five, which is the scale that Gallup uses, we are now at 472, I think, at the level of the company. So this is quite high. Every year, uh, Carsten, I think you mentioned earlier that you don't understand why we don't put it in KPIs. We put it in KPIs and every year we, we, we put a, a, the, the target a bit higher. We know that it will not be possible to, um, to go to five for everybody, but we really want the one who are uh, lagging behind to be able to come and to join the, the top team of our hotels. This is uh, just a summary of uh, Kant's De uh, definition about engagement, but I think it really, it really um, reflects what um, we want to our people to be able to do, and uh, that's on what we work when we talk about engagement. That's another thing. We measure engagement, as I mentioned, once a year plus the Pearl survey. What is very important, I think, is the behavior of the people, and this is not about I can give you some examples. It's not about organizing a picnic two weeks before the, measure, the measurement and colleague engagement. This does not work. It can impact, but this is not a sustainable way of doing it. So what we do with our leader, what we do with everybody in our hotels, uh, is really to, to make sure that everybody is aware of what engagement is and uh, Sonny said, gave, gave us a few examples and a few case study. Obviously, the Swiss Hotel Talk was one that we wanted to um, to develop and to put on top of the different uh, tools and behavior that we have uh, in place in our hotel. I mentioned, I mean, you're gonna hear about hotels for the next 10 minutes, obviously. Well, 10 minutes, uh, maybe not, but... Uh, um, well, there are two things in the luxury uh, hospitality, which is quite interesting. Customer relationships are associated more closely with the individual service provider than with the organization. And our people work are more related to the guests than they are to the organization, which is quite challenging if you want to develop a strong um, engagement uh, strategy. And the other one, which is my um, 
probably that's going to be my career fight is the hierarchy and the higher you go in the hospitality industry the higher you will have a very strong hierarchy and people will who are only accessible from one step to the other and this is really a challenge that we're having to really communicate engagement and to have to break the barriers to have people who are in place who are confident and who don't have to hide behind a title or just close the door of their office because they don't want to answer the question. So we're working a lot on, uh, on hierarchy. We yeah, still fight with people who come with title and say, I want to be this thing. And I say, what can you do for this title? And that's really more the competency that we're looking at rather than the title. And that's the way we try to, uh, try to break barriers and diminish the hierarchy. I see my colleague Lilian who is analyzing. <laughs> so, this is at the center of our uh, people practice, just in a few words, how it works. Well, obviously we have um, interview when we, where we uh, define the first tool, the job fit, obviously, and also uh, the affective commitment, which is the interest that, that you have in joining one company rather than the other. And we see with the hundred of candidates that we see that some of them are more uh, made to work for Swiss Hotel rather than other uh, companies or for Fairmont rather than other companies, either part of the group or, or outside. And then the psychological climate is the third element that people will discover when they will join uh, our company. We'll reach employee, uh, high employee engagement and that will result in two examples, I mean there is a lot, but I think the discretionary effort is very important in the service industry, particularly in, the, in hotels, where we always say that we want to exceed the expectation of our guests and the intention to turn over. Turnover is massive in the hotel industry and there are different reasons. It's not only about engagement, it can also be in some location. I worked in London. Swiss Hotel in London was a five-star hotel, but compared to the Savoy, compared to Claridge's or other big five-star, that was an entry point for French students who wanted to come and learn English. And after a year, when they got all better English and also uh, accustomed with the five-star standard, then they were going to, to, to houses that were a bit more prestigious. So this is the way we look at it um, and this is the way where we've been quite successful. My research, employee engagement is at the center of it obviously and uh, as I mentioned at the start of this presentation, I had to really reduce all my interest. I could have put another 10 bubbles around the uh, employee engagement. I don't say I will not continue to research it afterwards. But, um, so I've looked at work climate, which is a very important aspect in this industry. Uh, job characteristics, I calculated once, I think we had about 42 different job, uh, job title and job categories as well. So you go from a chef to a housekeeper, to a painter, to a receptionist, to, and you name it. And it's a very good representation of the world. We all, the, the, the magic trick there is that everybody work under the same roof and need to work together and this is also part of uh, what we try to achieve in, um, in, engage, in measuring engagement or in promoting engagement in our hotels. And finally the net nature of service work, uh, this is something that is very specific and uh, where we look at uh, people who are engaged not only with the company as we've seen earlier but also with the outside world. Hmm. 19 minutes. There is another thing I just wanted to, to put here because that's, and I think I started telling it earlier, that's very important to me. We measure engagement twice a year, but this is crucial that every minute we are aware of what's happening in terms of engagement in our hotel. I always look at our people when I visit hotels and I see the most junior people of the company who are in contact with our guests. This is the opposite of, I don't know, if you take the, the manufacturing world where you will have senior people going to sell a car and things like this. You start in a hotel after a couple of weeks or maybe not even a couple of days, you're going to be facing clients or guests. And it is very important that through engagement we can pass all the necessary standards and also the behavior that we expect from these people. You check in in a hotel, I'm sure you've never asked somebody how long they've been working at the reception. It can be two days and it can be 20 years. 
So, to go back to our uh, project, it started like this. We had, um, I walked through the park in Erlikon, I went for dinner with Chris to the Swiss Hotel, and we had spoken before about uh, the tool that he has, the platform that he has available, and I was thinking, hmm, maybe we can do something that is a bit different, that uh, will work like a Twitter, and um, where we will be able to uh, really link our people. We've done a six weeks uh, project with Jana, I think I've seen her, yeah, she's there. She was doing a bachelor thesis and uh, she's been gathering information from this six weeks project. And I must say that considering we did it in our three Swiss hotels, and I put two words, Swiss, oh sorry, the Swiss hotels are the Swiss hotel in Switzerland, uh, we've got a great feedback. We had to fight a bit because we had this po portable application and you're not supposed to check your emails or your Twitter when you're working at the reception. So we've, uh, we had to explain where to do. We did a roadshow, we had to do a bit of uh, arm twisting with our general manager who forbid people to carry their mobile and we said, well, maybe we can put some rule that they do it in the canteen during the break, etc. Um, great success, really worked like a, um, like a Twitter and when the company got reorganized last year in July, uh, that's one of the first projects that we wanted to take at a more global level and we've now uh, started about two months ago I think. Um, the, Swiss, the Swiss Hotel Talk has become the FIHI Talk, which is the new name of the company. Um, I think today it's more like a Facebook than it was a Twitter before because we don't have yet the uh, portable application but I just wanted to uh, try to switch to, to it. Maybe I'll do it at the end of the presentation but it, do you think I'm going to manage that? Yeah, yeah. you go to Chrome. <laughs> ah, Chrome, okay. Yeah. Voila. And yes, this is, and you, you can see that the last, can we refresh, I'm sure there's been a post between the three hours ago in uh, Fairmont, Washington. No? Okay, well, Claudia, I thought you were. So, well, that's, that's the thing, and really, if you, if you scroll down, maybe, um, there is really, I mean, you have here uh, Monte Carlo, well, bad picture, uh, Berlin, we have our sales and marketing conference in, uh, in uh, Monte Carlo, so I guess there will be a lot in the coming days. Uh, you can see that uh, this is from Raffles Le Royal in, uh, in Angkor. So really, we really have this, uh, that was us last week in, uh, in Montreux. We really have a lot of uh, input from, from all over the world and I must say that this is a very successful tool, part of our engagement tool. That's not the one that will uh, make engagement become something really uh, natural with us, but it will definitely contribute. I go back to the presentation like this. Yeah. And I just wanted to share my favorite cartoon with you which reflects a bit the reality when we measure engagement. Thank you very much.